Welcome everybody for the Indosoft webinar about database connectivity and redundancy. My name is Fabio Teresino. I work with Indosoft for about 14 years and uh, we decided to di divide this presentation in three main portions. Uh, first, I will just talk about some concepts and uh, explain the technology that we use to save and retrieve data from databases. Uh, the different options we have for redundancy <laughs> and how uh, those mechanisms work uh, behind the scenes. And then I will switch to a, a practical demonstration using the product itself, configuring in the software studio to save data to databases, retrieve data from the databases, uh, pretty much apply the concepts that we discussed in the first portion. And then I will open for Q&A. So during the presentation, if you have any questions, feel free to write them uh, in the chat dialog from the webinar or even in the Q&A uh, panel from the webinar. And I'll be reading your questions and answering them at the end of the webinar. So having said that, Uh, Indo Software Studio is pretty much designed in what we call layers of abstractions. And uh, the, the main reason uh, we design the product this way is to give you a, a high level of flexibility to create uh, templates or, or standard applications in standard components and be able to link this application to different interfaces, to different external components not having to redesign the whole application. And the interface to databases is one of the interfaces where we applied the layer of abstraction. So the whole idea is that using the software studio, you can exchange data with any SQL relational database that supports the standard technologies like ODBC, OLEDB, ADO, or ADO.NET. And when you configure your screens, your uh, alarm worksheets, event worksheets, trained worksheets, scripts, you do not worry about the specific database that you are exchanging data with. And then in the soft, there is one setting called connection string where you create database connections. You link in the soft to a particular database and uh, the application just works with whatever database you, you uh, selected. If you want to deploy the same application at a different site where the end user uh, decides to, to use a different database, you just have to change this connection string and you do not have to redesign anything else in the application. And the application will just work properly with the new database. And Indosoft has built-in uh, tasks that are able to save and retrieve data in databases and support redundancy natively in the product, like the alarm history, event history, trend history. Uh, and we support different modes of redundancy, uh, including uh, what we call the redundant mode or the store and forward mode. And we talk in details about each one of them uh, in a little bit here. So the bottom line is you can design your application to save data to one particular database, let's say to Microsoft SQL Server 2008. And down the road, if you want to migrate to a different database, uh, SQL Server 2010 or Oracle Sybase, you change one setting in the application and everything else keeps working the same way and Indosoft is able to exchange data with this other database. As long as you have ODBC, OLEDB, ADO, or ADO.NET for this uh, other database. But let's, uh, and then using those interfaces, we just put together here some screenshots from real world applications where customers used the built in features in Indosoft to save and retrieve data from external databases and create dashboards, OE reports, web-based reports, uh, retrieving data from different types of uh, databases. But let's see how it works behind the scenes. Uh, the, the last node here is the actual database itself, could be SQL Server, 
MySQL, Sybase, even a simple Excel or Access file, even though we do not recommend using those low-end uh, databases for history data because they are not designed to handle a large number of records. And then in order for an external application to access the database, there are providers developed by either Microsoft or by the database uh, developers. And those providers are pretty much drivers that allow you to exchange data with the database through applications that support standard interfaces, such as ODBC, OLEDB, ADO, or ADO.NET. And Indosoft Web Studio supports all those interfaces in a very standard way, uh, so you do not have to understand the difference between those technologies or how they actually work internally, because it's pretty much done in an automatic and transparent way for you. In order for the application, uh, an external application like in the software studio to exchange data with the databases through the providers, the application must be running on the same computer where the provider is installed. But the problem is some providers for some specific databases like uh, even the SQL Server, Oracle and, and many others are not available for all the operating systems where Indus, uh, supported by Indosoft, like for instance, Windows CE or Windows Mobile. So Indosoft decided to create this external generic component called Studio Database Gateway, which is pretty much the stadio.svr.exe file in the bin folder of Indosoft Web Studio. And this process is the one that actually links to the provider and exchanges data with the database. In Indosoft Web Studio Embedded View or CView Runtime, exchange data with the Studio Database Gateway via TCP IP. So Indosoft Web Studio not necessarily needs to be on the same computer where the Studio Database Gateway is running. By this way, you could have in the software studio, in this case, C view running in a Windows C device, run the studio database gateway in the remote PC where you have your database, your Oracle database or SQL Server database, and C view is able to exchange data with the remote database through the studio database gateway, even though the provider for that particular database is not supported under Windows CE. So Indosoft holds even a patent for this solution for, for the technology we created uh, to access databases remotely, even when providers are not supported in the operating system where the product, the main product runs. And the Studio Database Gateway is the main component that makes it feasible. The Studio Database Gateway and the provider must be on the same computer but the other components could be in different stations. And ultimately, uh, when you have the local viewer or the remote thin clients, they communicate within the software Web studio embedded view or C view through the TCP IP server module built in in the software Web studio. So if you open a screen, the local viewer or a remote thin client, and uh, you use a trend control or alarm control, event control to display information from the database, the viewer component or the thin client component sends a request to the uh, Indosoft runtime. Uh, the TCP IP server from Indosoft runtime receives this request, forwards the, the request to the database gateway, the, and then the database gateway requests the data to the database through the provider available to that database. And this information goes back to the viewer. So the way the product is designed, everything happens in a transparent way. And in most cases, you do not even need to know that you have all those components in stack. <coughs> but this architecture brings us a lot of uh, flexibility to support many different architectures. So this is a typical one where you install everything on the same computer. So in the software studio, embedded view or C view runs on this computer where you have also the studio database gateway 
the STSVR, uh, STAGOSVR.exe, the database provider. In the actual database, they all reside on the same station. And then remote thin clients can connect to Windowsoft running on this computer, which connects to the database gateway via TCP IP, which happens to be running on the same computer. And then the gateway reads data or writes data to the database through the provider for that particular database either uh, ODBC, OLEDB, ADO, or ADO.NET provider. Another possible architecture would be something like that. As long as your provider uh, supports, uh, pro gives you uh, support for remote databases, you could have one or more computers running the Indosoft runtime software with the local database gateway, talking to a local provider, but the actual database could be a remote database and more than one applications could be sharing the same remote, remote database. Thin client stations would connect to the actual server for the thin client station and then the server would forward the data to the database gateway and then to the provider on the same computer and then retrieve or write data to the remote database. And finally, you could have an architecture like this one, where you have the Indosoft runtime running one station, but the Studio Database Gateway, the stadosvr.exe, running in a remote station where you have the provider. And the database could be in this second station or even in a third isolated station uh, if your provider supports a remote database. But this architecture is typical for stations like, for instance, uh, Windows C HMIs that want to read or write data to remote databases. Even though there are not providers for those databases under Windows CE, you can run CView on those stations and just configure CView to exchange data with the database through the gateway, the Studio ADO gateway, which is running in a remote computer. And in this remote computer, all you have to do is copy two files from the bin folder of Indosoft Web Studio, stadosvr.exe and stadosvr.ini, and run the executable file manually on the remote station. And if you have thin clients, no problem. They connect to the server. The server connects to the database gateway via TCP IP running a remote computer the gateway receive, retrieves data from the database and sends it back to the thin clients. So that block diagram is flexible enough to be adapted to many different typical architectures. In talking about redundancy, when you go to the database uh, under the development environment, when you go under projects, options, and configure the default database, you can configure the database connection <coughs> for what we call the primary database in the secondary database, which could be, uh, if enabled, could be uh, used in redundant mode or in store and forward mode. And there are specific tasks from Indosoft that are able to read this configuration, <coughs> sorry, and behave according to this configuration like the alarm task, which writes alarm history data into the database according to this configuration. The alarm control is able, is able to read data, query data uh, from the database according to the database connection. Similar for the event task, the event task writes data to the database and the event control object reads data from the database. The trained task writes data to the database in the trend control reads data from the database even though the arrow is missing here in the PowerPoint. And the grid control is able to read data from the remote database as well. And there are two modes for, uh, the, for the secondary database. There is what we call redundant mode in the store and forward mode. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. In both cases, you have two databases, the primary one and the secondary one. Doesn't matter if they are from the same type or from different types. 
The primary database could be Microsoft SQL Server, and the secondary could be a simple MDB file. Or the primary could be Oracle, and the secondary Microsoft SQL Server. Doesn't matter. Or they could be both from the same type. They could be both Microsoft SQL Server databases. In redundant mode, whenever the Indosoft tasks uh, mentioned before need to insert some data into the database, Indosoft inserts data into both databases in parallel. So if a new alarm happens, Indosoft writes the alarm message in both databases simultaneously. If a new event happens, we write information in both databases. If the trained task needs to save some information, it saves data in both databases automatically. If either one of those databases become unavailable for any reason, for instance, if it is a remote database and you lose the, the network connection with that particular computer, Indosoft keeps saving data into the remaining database. So, for instance, if the primary database goes down for any reason, Indosoft keeps saving data into the secondary database. And when the primary database becomes available again, Indosoft automatically, automatically synchronizes the alarm history tables, event history tables, and trained tables from the secondary to the primary. And after synchronizing the tables, it keeps saving data on both databases uh, side by side again. Same thing if the secondary database goes down, Indosoft keeps saving data into the primary, and when the secondary comes back on, Indosoft synchronizes both databases automatically. And both databases could be remote, both databases could be local, even though it does not make much sense for redundancy, and one could be local and another one could be uh, remote. So either way, it doesn't matter. Uh, you just define the connections, connection string linking Indosoft to a local or remote database. In store and forward mode, the behavior is a little bit different. Instead of saving data to both databases at any time, Indosoft saves data only to the primary. So if a new alarm, a new event, or trained uh, worksheet triggers uh, uh, an event to write data to the database, Indosoft Web Studio writes this data only into the primary database. If this primary database becomes unavailable, and only if this primary database is not available, then Indosoft starts saving history data into the secondary database. And when the primary database becomes available again, Indosoft automatically moves, not copies, but moves the data from the secondary database to the primary database. So in store and forward mode, the secondary database is just a temporary buffer to make sure that you do not lose data, even if the connection with the primary database is lost. So typically in this configuration, the primary database is a remote database in a remote station, usually a large uh, database like SQL Server or Oracle. And the secondary database is a local database installed on the same computer where you have in the software studio and not necessarily such a large database because it's, it's not designed, it's not going to be used to save all the history information for the whole system. It's only to store history data uh, for a period of time while the primary database, for whatever reason, is not available. And eventually, when the primary database is available again, Indosoft moves the data from the secondary to the primary database automatically. So in normal conditions, the secondary database will be pretty much empty. And what's pretty nice about all those options is that they are very, very simple to configure. And uh, that's what I intend to demonstrate uh, using the product now. So I'm going to switch here to my development environment. Uh, this is Windows Soft Web Studio 7.0 Service Pack 1. I'm going to create a brand new project here, Webinar DB, for example. 
for that. Okay, so this is a new application. I have no tags, I have no configuration. So just to make some tests here, I can create a tag. Let's say tag A. And link this tag to some uh, tasks. For instance, I want to generate alarms whenever tag A has the value 1. And I want to save to the history when the alarm becomes active, when it's acknowledged, and when it's normalized. Very well. Alarm number 1. I can create also a trained worksheet with the tag A and tell Indosoft to save this information into the database whenever tag A changes of value. Very well. And I can use the event logger as well, enable it here, and tell Indosoft whenever tag A changes of value, I save a message, for instance, saying tag A changed, for example. Now I can create a graphical screen. So those tasks, the event logger, the alarm group, and the trained group, they are used to save data into the database. And now I'm going to create a screen with objects that retrieve data from the databases. So I'm going to create a simple button here <clears throat> just to have a way to shut down the application from the runtime. And why not another button here with the label, for instance, tag A. And here in command, when I click on this button, I toggle tag A. And let's also change the color of this object according to the value of tag A. So I know if it is 0 or 1. Then I can add some graphical components here, like the trained control to display the value from tag A. Minimum 0, maximum 1 as a Boolean tag. Let me even change here the color, let's say to this blue color. Very well, can create here a alarm control to display alarm history information. So this object will pretty much retrieve data from the alarm history tables. And another control here, the same object but configured differently to read information not from the alarm history, but from the event history. And here in columns, I can add here the event time column, show, so it shows when the event happened. And I will change here the background color to white, so it's easier to differentiate alarms from events. I can save this screen as the main screen. And then I will set this screen as the startup screen. Okay, if I run the application right now, here in project options, alarm and events are configured to be saved into the proprietary format from Indosoft Web Studio. And if I come here to the trained worksheet, the trained worksheet is also configured to save data into the proprietary format from Indosoft. So if I run the application, it even works. I can change here the tag to one, zero, and you see the alarms, you see the events, but nothing is being saved to an external database. Everything is being saved to the proprietary files from Indosoft, which is fine for small projects or even large projects where you do not need to share this information with other systems where you do not have to worry about redundancy or where you do not need to create uh, advanced reports with averages uh, or, or things like that. If you are creating a large project or if redundancy is important to you, then you should, <coughs> uh, instead of using the proprietary uh, history files, configure Indosoft to save data to an external SQL relational database. So in my case here, I'm going to use Microsoft SQL Server. 
but could be any other database. I'm gonna create a new uh, a, a new database. So let's call webinar DB. <clears throat> so it's a brand new database. There are no tables here. So brand new. I can go back to Windows Software Studio. Go to Project Options and link in the soft to this database using this default database link here. <clears throat> if you know the syntax for the connection string uh, for the database that you want to connect with, you can just type here, but we created this option so you do not have to worry about the syntax. You just follow a wizard to link in the soft to any database through ODBC providers or ADO providers, <clears throat> or even OLEDB providers. Uh, so in my case, I'm gonna select here the provider for SQL Server. Here, I def this provider supports remote databases, uh, but in my case, I'm gonna use my local database so I can show the information to you during the webinar. And here I select the actual database from this particular server where I want to save and retrieve data from. So in our case, it's going to be the webinar DB. The connection succeeded. And in the soft builds here, the connection string for my primary database. <clears throat> I can say, OK, OK. Run the application. And here I can switch tag A. Now in the soft is still saving data and retrieving data from the proprietary database because I created the primary database connection, but I didn't tell Indosoft tasks to save and retrieve data from the primary database. So for alarms and events, I can go to options and change the history format to database. And here alarms and events are automatically linked to the default database alarms to the table alarm history you can customize if you want and events to the table event history you can also customize if you want and here in the trained worksheet per worksheet i can define if i want to save the data to the database or not and in this case it's going to save the data into the table trained 001 and you can customize the table name if you want <clears throat> so we can save this configuration, start the runtime, and now I do not see the information from the proprietary files anymore because now Indosoft is saving data into the uh, database. But if I toggle here the tag, Indosoft is saving data into the SQL relational database and retrieving data. The objects are automatically retrieving data from the SQL relational database. Uh, the, the, the beauty of this kind of configuration is the fact that after changing the database where I'm saving data, or even from proprietary to database, I didn't have to change anything on the screens, anything on the objects. That's the layer of abstraction that isolates the graphical interface from where the information is actually saved to. And if I go here to SQL Server Database, <clears throat> I can see that Indosoft automatically created here the alarm history table and saved the alarm information into this table, the event history table, and saved the events into this table, and the trained table, and saved <clears throat> the trained information for tag A into this table. <clears throat> so everything works pretty much automatically and behind the scenes, but using the diagrams, uh, using the interfaces, the, the architectures that we discussed at the beginning of the webinar. <clears throat> now, in this configuration, I'm using the soft to save data to a primary database. But if this primary database is running a remote computer, and I lose the connection with this database, <clears throat> I will not be able to keep saving data into this database in any alarms, events, or trained information during this period of time will be pretty much lost. So to avoid that, you can configure 
a secondary database for Windows Software Studio. Uh, in order to demonstrate that the secondary database does not have to be from the same type, same type as the primary, I'm going to uh, reset the tables here in this primary database, delete all those tables, so I have a blank database again, here the webinar DB, and I'm going to use Microsoft Access <clears throat> to create a MDB file to be used as the secondary database. So I'm going to create a new file here under webinardb.mdb, for example, as an MDB file, create, and that's good enough. So this MDB file will be used as my secondary database. <clears throat> Then to configure this MDB file as the secondary database, I just come here to Project Options, Default Database, select here the secondary database, and enable the secondary database with one of the two modes, redundant or store and forward. <clears throat> so let's select redundant, for example. Then I can use here the JET provider for access link here in the soft to this mdb file connection succeeded okay okay so now i have a primary database with sql server and a secondary database with my mdb file in redundant mode so when i start the application <clears throat> and toggle here tag a Indosoft is actually saving those events in both databases, in the SQL Server database and in the Access secondary database. But the objects are reading data only from the primary. <clears throat> so if I come here to the SQL Server database, Indosoft created the tables again, alarm history, event history, trend history, and saves the data there. And if I see the mdb file again <clears throat> okay indosoft created exactly the same tables on the secondary database and stored the same information on the tables from this secondary database alarm history trend history and event history so everything is saved in parallel in both databases and the objects retrieve data only from the primary database, unless the primary database goes down. If the primary database goes down, then Indosoft keeps saving data <coughs> only from the secondary database, and all the objects automatically retrieves data from the secondary database. And when the primary database comes back on, we synchronize both databases, and the objects will read data again from the primary database. What about the other format, the store and forward mode? Oh, and I'm not disabling the database here because the database is running on the same computer where, where I have in the software studio, the primary and the secondary. So I cannot just close the connection, uh, the, the network connection with the primary database. But as far as the configuration goes, that's exactly how it should be done. So now I'm going to stop here the application, reset the databases again, delete the tables from both databases. <clears throat> and I'm going to change the mode for the secondary database. So I go back there to secondary. And I change the mode from redundant to store and forward and run the application. <clears throat> so again, if I toggle here, tag A, I'm able to see the information on the screen. So everything keeps working just fine. But now in the soft is saving data only on the SQL Server database. Indosoft created the tables here, 
If I open the tables, Indosoft keeps saving history data to those tables. But if I go to Microsoft Access, Indosoft created the tables on the database, but it should not have saved any data on those tables. Because in store and forward mode, Indosoft saves data only on the primary. And if the primary becomes unavailable for any reason, then Indosoft saves data into the tables from the secondary database. And when the primary database becomes available, Indosoft synchronizes the information, Mo actually moves the data from the secondary <clears throat> to the primary. So there are a few additional settings that I'd like to discuss here. You have this retry interval here uh, for the primary database and for the secondary database. By default, uh, 120 seconds, two minutes. This retry interval is used uh, to, uh, for Indosoft to check if the database is available again. So if Indosoft is saving data, let's say to the primary database, and this database is disconnected from the network, so we identify this database is no longer uh, available. Indosoft then starts saving data into the secondary database, and it will check if the primary database is available again 60 seconds after uh, the database became unavailable. And if it is available, then Indosoft synchronizes or moves data from the secondary to the primary and keeps the saving data to the primary. If it's no longer available yet, then it keeps saving data on the secondary and 60 seconds later, it checks again. So this is pretty much the interval used by Indosoft to check if that database is available, if it becomes unavailable for any reason. <clears throat> here in advanced, I have here this section for database gateway, where I have a host IP address and a port number. So if you remember the diagram, Indosoft exchanges data with the Studio ADO gateway, this module right here through TCP IP. So Indosoft needs to know the IP address where the gateway is running. Since in many configurations, the ADO gateway is running on the same computer where you have Indosoft Web Studio, this host IP address is set to 127.0.0.1, which is a special IP address, which means local host. And if this is the IP address, when you run the application, Indosoft not only tries to connect with the gateway in the local computer, but it also even launches the gateway, runs the ADO gateway automatically. It goes automatically to the uh, products bin folder. So let's go to the product path. Goes to the bin folder of Indosoft Web Studio and starts the ADO gateway automatically. If you need to run the ADO gateway in a remote computer, then all you have to do is change here in advanced, the IP address of the gateway to be the IP address of the remote computer where the ADO gateway should run. Copy those two files from the bin folder of Indosoft Web Studio and only those two files to the remote computer where you have the database and run the stadosvr.exe manually on this remote computer. Then Indosoft Web Studio will connect to the remote gateway and exchange data with the remote database via TCP IP through a TCP IP link. Also, for each one of the tasks, for alarm, for event, and for trains, you have here a field to define a status field for the primary database. For instance, alarm status primary. Let's create this tag as integer. And another tag for the status for the secondary database connection. So let's say alarm status secondary. <clears throat> Very well. And you can do the same thing for events, for example. 
So here I can have event status primary. And for the secondary, I can have event status secondary. So for in the same thing for the trained worksheet as well. I could come here to the trained worksheet, database configuration, define one tag for the primary, another tag for the secondary. But the bottom line is each one of those tasks uh, update those tags with the actual status of the connection. For example, if I run the application now, <clears throat> there we go. Indosoft sets this tag to one, indicating that the alarm task is actually connected to the primary database. If the connection with the primary database is lost, Indosoft automatically writes the value zero to this tag, and then it tries to save data to the secondary database, and if the second da secondary database is available, this tag changes to one, indicating to you that the secondary database is online, is available. And when the primary database comes back online, Indosoft move changes the, the value of both tags to two, indicating that the data from the secondary and the primary is being somehow synchronized or moved from the secondary to the primary. So if you see the value one here in the primary, means Indosoft is saving data to the primary and it's not synchronizing data between the primary and the secondary. If the value is zero, it means the connection with the primary is lost. And if the value is two, it means Indosoft is currently synchronizing data from the primary and secondary or moving data from the secondary to the primary if you enabled the store and forward mode. So this pretty much what covers the main concepts and demonstrations I had in mind. And now if you have any questions, uh, I'll be uh, feel free to write them in the chat or Q&A uh, panel and I'll be glad to answer them. Uh, there is one question here about support for iPads and Androids. Recently, we uh, released in our website uh, a blog <clears throat> talking about how to display information from Secure Viewer Thin clients on those tablets. Uh, the next webinar will be about cloud-based application, and we're going to demonstrate that in details. But pretty much, uh, if I go back here to the diagrams, the database interface is available to the thin clients as well, including the Secure Viewer Thin Client. So using the Secure Viewer Thin Client solution in an iPad, Android, or, or even an iPhone, <clears throat> using our re uh, remote desktop solution, you would be able to retrieve data from remote databases even redundant databases for, from tablet devices. And we'll be demonstrate that, demonstrating that in details uh, on the next webinar. But in the meantime, uh, if you have specific questions, <clears throat> feel free to send emails uh, to fabio.souza at indosoft.com, my email address here. And I will send you a link with uh, the blog in, in our website with the instructions on how to configure that and even how to connect to our server on the cloud and visualize information from tablets like Androids or iPads. Uh, there is a question here, is there a limit to the amount of data that can be stored and forwarded from the secondary DB to the primary DB? Example, if the primary was down for a couple of days. The limit is pretty much hard disk space and number of records that your secondary database supports. Uh, in Indosoft itself, there is no limit. Uh, obviously, the more data you have to synchronize later, the longer it will take to synchronize data. Uh, but even while Indosoft is synchronizing data, if new events happen, 
in the soft, writes the new values to the database, and then continues with the synchronization. So th there is no limit from Indosoft, but again, the, the, the more data you have uh, in, in the secondary database, the longer it's going to take to synchronize both databases. <clears throat> Is there any other question? Let's see. Have a Q and A panel here. So, uh, will slides PDF be made available to the attendees? Yes. Uh, after this presentation, we are gonna uh, upload this presentation in a video and make it available from our website. And all the attendees from this website will receive a copy of this PowerPoint presentation and a link for the video from the presentation on the web. <clears throat> is there a way to have trained uh, sheet to store uh, on proprietary database and onto a SQL database so there is no uh, overhead on the SQL or when the view is trained when view trains <clears throat> when you configure the trained worksheets either you save data into a database or you save it to a proprietary database but especially in Indusoft's ver uh, web studio version 7.1 service pack 1 you have a new option here in advanced called decimation in enabling this option, which is checked by default for new applications, uh, retrieving trained information from SQL relational databases will most likely provide a better performance than the proprietary database from Indosoft Web Studio, because you pretty much define a maximum number of points here in the database gateway <clears throat> right here decimates the data so it queries whatever number of points you want from the database one million whatever but it treats the data before sending this data forward to make sure that the thin client receives only the minimum number of points it needs to show the graphic with maximum resolution Uh, one question here, it's difficult to figure out the connection string for MySQL with .NET connector and uh, in the most recent version of the help file, we updated here the chapter about database interface. If you go to appendices, we have specific topics about how to create the connection string for different databases, including MySQL. So here you have examples on how to build the connection string for MySQL, what each one of the settings mean. So even if you have to type this connection string manually, uh, we have here the documentation explaining how to build this connection string uh, in the software studio. <clears throat> Uh, do you have preferred or recommended databases which provided the highest performance? Uh, how to open sources, uh, MySQL, Postgres compared to Microsoft SQL or Oracle in terms of performance? Uh, uh, to be honest, recently we have made some benchmark tests and we didn't see major difference, major performance difference between Microsoft SQL Server uh, in MySQL, which were the two main ones that we used in our benchmark tests. But the majority of our tests, uh, our customers, and most of the key weight tests made with the product are made uh, based on Microsoft SQL Server. And obviously it has a nice interface to the Windows uh, operating system. So I'd say most of our customers use Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, but we have a, a good number of customers that use MySQL as well, and uh, we have not seen any problems with performance or compatibility within the software studio, uh, even in large projects with uh, dozens of thousands of tags. Uh, the databases I would not recommend at all for history data would be MDB files or even Excel files, 
even though it's technically possible for Indosoft to save and retrieve data from those databases, they are definitely not designed for this kind of uh, application. And the performance will, will decrease uh, fairly quickly as you add more and more records into the database. In the Microsoft SQL Server Express 2008 from Microsoft is free of charge and supports up to 10 gigabytes per database. So it has been a quite feasible solution for customers that want to have the database flexibility for medium applications. There is one question here about query the SQL Server for average in the last day, and you can customize queries uh, using the grid object. So I'm gonna create here, uh, just to do a quick test, the grid object on the screen. And uh, let's say here in my database, I have this trained table, and I have, for instance, the tag A column with some values. So here in the trained control, I can change the data source of the grid control to database, link it to the trained table, could be any other table, just doing an example here, and then associate it with the column tag A, reading it as a numeric field. Save it, and now in the soft shows 0, 01, 0, 01, whatever it is, right? If I want to customize this query, then uh, what I have to do is come here to Options under Advanced and check the checkbox to disable the limiters, which are useful only to avoid errors when you use keywords for table names or for field names. But if you want to customize the queries, uh, you can check this checkbox to disable the delimiters. And then here under columns, you can customize the, the query. For instance, average tag A. Save it. So during the runtime, Indosoft shows here the average for tag A is 0 0.5 and it's trunked, it's rounded to zero here in this case. But the grid object is actually executing this average, uh, uh, this average uh, function and returning a value here to the grid control. So, and this is a very simple example. You could do that for several uh, columns. You could create a group by SQL statement because here in the table field, you can keep customizing this SQL statement. In the soft queries data from trend one, and you can say where and have tags here between curly braces or thereby and other tags here between curly braces. So you can customize any SQL statement in the using the table fields and also the, uh, the cells here in the field column. What Indosoft does is select and then everything that you write here in the fields from whatever you write here in the table uh, field. Can you set up redundancy among more than two servers? You could have two servers running in the software studio in redundant mode, hot standby, and each one of them could be configured to save data to, to uh, a primary and secondary database and they could even share the databases with each other. Uh, just to make a quick example here, it would be something, typically something like that. Let me just delete here. So I could have two stations here, this one, in this one so let's say the left one is the hot station the other one is the standby station and for this application this is the primary database and this is the secondary database and for this station 
this is the history, the primary database, and this is the secondary database. So whatever station is the hot one by the time, we'll be saving data to both databases and both databases become, are synchronized by whatever station is the, the main one, the hot one at any given time. Uh, how we can create separate tag sheets for creating real-time PLC tags. Uh, not sure uh, exactly what the question means, but in Indosoft you can create different trained worksheets uh, and have different tags in each worksheet. Like this one could be tag A, uh, tag B, and tag C saving data to the table trained one <clears throat> and you can create another worksheet for instance with tag d tag e saving data to another table for instance trained two and those tags uh, the, the actual online values from those tags can be populated by native drivers or opc or any other interface in the software studio <clears throat> Is there any support for Linux Postgres uh, SQL? Yes, there are actually providers, uh, ODBC providers to this database. Uh, so the only thing is uh, it would be an architecture similar to this one. You would have the soft running in one computer uh, on a Microsoft operating system with the provider for the database here. And the actual database would be in a remote computer in a different computer running Linux. But yes, we have customers actually using this solution. <clears throat> so, uh, have here, I have been running an Indosoft CE runtime since a year in a store and forward topology with a primary SQL database for a SCADA system. And so far it has worked every time when we lost connectivity to the primary database. Uh, thanks for your great product. Thank you very much for the comments. I appreciate it. I think this question here is the, the, the redundant mode that we uh, described before. And this pretty much covers uh, all the questions that... Uh, oh, th there are a few other questions here in the chat. Sorry. <clears throat> okay. Uh, do we need to buy separate license for the database gateway? Great question. In, in, in our, the Studio database gateway does not require licenses. So in an architecture like this one, for example, you need a license for Indosoft in the stations where Indosoft is running, but you do not have to install any license for the database gateway in the remote computer where the database gateway is running. So we do not require any license for the uh, on the station where you run the studio the database gateway. Here I have multiple grid objects accessing and writing into a SQL database via the studio ADO gateway on another computer. Uh, can those grids write info at the same time or should I take precaution, precautions to make sure that only one grid writes at a time? Good, good news, you do not have to worry about that. The Studio Database Gateway was designed specifically to receive several request, uh, requests at the same time, uh, create an internal buffer to process those messages and process those messages as they arrive. So yes, you could have different applications, different grids or different grids from the same application, sending information to the same gateway and the gateway will take care to uh, execute all those commands. Do you have plans to improve the data grid object to get data from more than one table? You can do it today already. 
So here in the grid control, you could say uh, read information, for instance, uh, let's say here tag A, tag B. So I want to read table one dot column one and here table two dot column three, for example, from <clears throat> table one dot table two. So remember the, the only main thing you have to do is come here under options default database advanced and disable delimiters otherwise those custom SQL statements on the grid control will not work and this checkbox is available in service Indosoft 7.0 service pack 1 and it, it will be available in future versions as well This I answered. I believe the other questions have been answered. So I'd like to thank you very much for your comments and for your questions. Uh, I hope this webinar uh, was useful for you. And uh, I hope to see you again in the next webinar. Thank you very much and you have a great day.